people visited at Cockatoo Island, where they watched the Jaguar Land Rover driving challenge with the Duke even snapping pictures on his phone. The official opening for the games has been delayed by a huge tropical storm. Organizers took to Twitter to confirm that the tropical weather event arriving in Cindy would delay the opening of the games, where Harry is due to make a speech. Both opted for a black shirt with the emblem of the games, which is the event where the pair went public with their relationship last year. Pregnant Meghan threw on a chic white blazer and teamed it with black skinny jeans and tortoise shell sunglasses, while Harry wore grey trousers and brown boots. The event is an international Paralympic-style sporting event for wounded, sick or injured members of the armed forces, as well as veterans. Prince Harry created the Games after being inspired by the U.S. Warrior Games, a similar sporting event for injured service personnel. When they arrived, Harry put an affectionate hand on his wife's lower back as they walked along the jetty to meet with the competitors and their support staff. They then watched the races get underway before awarding the drivers with their well-deserved medals. The royal couple also spent some time playing with remote-control cars with children who had traveled to the event from around the world with the athletes. Harry appeared to enjoy the toys as much as the kids as he was pictured laughing and even feigning annoyance as he gestured his arms in frustration. Earlier in the day, Harry and Meghan unveiled a Sydney War Memorial 84 years in the making at the Anzac Memorial. It commemorates the sacrifices of First World War soldiers from Australia and New Zealand was initially designed in the 1930s. But the Great Depression meant the vision of artist Bruce Dellett was shelved. It features a four-tier cascading waterfall on the Liverpool Street side of the monument. Harry wore the white tropical dress of his regiment the Blues and Royals complete with medals and sword. Meghan was wearing a stunning black dress by New Zealand designer Emilia Wickstead and matching hat designed by Philip Tracy. They were met by Prime Minister Scott Morrison alongside Premier of New South Wales Gladys Berejiklian and David Elliott, the Minister for Veterans Affairs, on an overcast Sydney morning. There were also crowds along Liverpool Street, while other people, and a cardboard cutout of Harry and Meghan, watched on from balconies as the royals arrived. Twins Crystal and Sienna Dawson presented the royal couple with a medallion and a painting during their visit to the Anzac Memorial. The girls, aged nine, are from the Kumari Aboriginal dance troupe and both said they were nervous about meeting and performing for Harry and Meghan. Crystal, who did an Aboriginal art floral painting said, they said hi and nice to meet you. The medallion, presented by Sienna, said play the game, the motto of the Beverly Hills Public School which they attend. She said, I didn't want to dance at first, but then it was fun. Their mother, Connie, said, I think it was very overwhelming for them, as a parent. It was a very important ceremony and it's important that the next generation coming through should be part of it. The memorial was first opened in 1934 by Harry's great, great uncle and namesake, Prince Henry. Duke of Gloucester. The plaque unveiled by the Duke said, opened by the grandson of the Queen, the wording echoes the original which said opened by the son of the King and was designed to focus on the people lost, not the person who opened it. Retired General David Hurley, Governor of New South Wales told the 100,000 strong crowd, let silent contemplation be your offering. These words found at the entrance to the Hall of Silence evoke the sense of loss and grief that this memorial represents to the people of NSW. A choir sung I vow to thee my country Princess Diana's favorite hymn from her school days, which was sung both at her wedding in 1981 and her funeral in 1997. The Sussexes laid a wreath with a handwritten note which read, in grateful memory of those who paid the ultimate sacrifice and in recognition of the men and women for whom the scars of war endure. They then toured the Hall of Service containing 1,700 soil samples from each town, suburb and district in New South Wales listed as an address for First World War enlistees. The completion of the extension, which cost £22 million coincides with the 100th anniversary of the cessation of hostilities in the war. The couple had avoided any PDAs earlier this morning at the ceremony and were seemingly making up for it as they walked hand in hand around the event.
Saturday marks the couple's fifth day of the royal tour and yesterday things reached new heights for Harry as he and three Invictus Games competitors climbed Sydney Harbour Bridge. The Duke swapped the New South Wales standard for the Invictus flag at the top of the landmark, which towers 440 feet, 134 metres, above the water. It took him 13 minutes to ascend the 464 steps to the top of the bridge along the east side, before crossing the central walkway to raise the flag which flapped in the breeze. Earlier on Friday, Harry and Meghan visited another Sydney landmark, Bondi Beach. There, the couple met representatives from One Wave to talk about their work on mental health and then visited MacArthur Girls High School to discuss social justice and youth empowerment. Straight out of a romantic comedy, y'all. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle looked so in love during a torrential downpour in Dubbo on Wednesday, October 17. The newlyweds, who recently announced they're expecting their first child together, are currently in the middle of a 16 day tour to Fiji, Donga, New Zealand, and of course, Australia. Meghan looked lovingly at her man while holding an umbrella over him during a speech and he reciprocated the same facial expression in a separate pic. I mean, come on! This these two are just too adorable. Harry, 34, and Meghan, 37, shared their exciting baby news on Monday, October 15 right before beginning their first leg of the tour. Their Royal Highnesses the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are very pleased to announce that the Duchess of Sussex is expecting a baby in the spring of 2019. Kensington Palace revealed in a statement. Their Royal Highnesses have appreciated all of the support they have received from people around the world since their wedding in May and are delighted to be able to share this happy news with the public. The, literally perfect looking, couple attended the wedding of Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooks Bank on Friday, October 12 and Meghan was super sneaky about hiding her baby bump at the special event. I knew she was pregnant when she wore that massive coat. Over, the weekend. One user commented on Twitter. I knew Meghan Markle was pregnant when she wore the coat dress to Princess Eugenie's wedding, added another. While hindsight is 2020, the Duchess of Sussex often wears figure flattering ensembles, and a billowy number seemed a bit odd. In fact, the former Suits actress totally distracted us from her bump just three weeks before announcing the news, by changing up her hairstyle. Instead of rocking her typical curly hair, Meg opted for a sleek straight do, and naturally, the press went wild. After all, it's not every day that a royal decides to switch up her signature hairstyle. In fact, the Duchess' sister-in-law, Kate Middleton, seemingly did the same thing when she was pregnant. Back in September 2017, a Twitter user theorized that Kate uses her hair to distract the media from her growing belly. Pattern as Duchess of Cambridge changes her hairstyle, people concentrate on her head, and, then, she, announces, the, pregnancy, they wrote. Interesting. Speculation aside, one thing's for sure, Harry and Meghan are so freaking in love it hurts. Also, their baby is gonna be drop dead gorgeous. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are delighted to be expecting their first baby in the spring of 2019. So why is Meghan considered to be having a geriatric pregnancy? Meghan Markle and Prince Harry announced their exciting news on Monday as they embarked on a jam-packed two-week tour of Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, and Tonga. The couple were out for the first day of the tour on Tuesday, with Meghan showing hints of a baby bump in a chic white dress. And while the Duchess looks radiant with good health, her age, Meghan is 37, technically classifies her as having a geriatric pregnancy. The term was used for women who are 35 and above but is now considered very old-fashioned. Meghan certainly isn't alone in having her pregnancy later in her 30s. According to figures from the Office for National Statistics, 54% of mums in England and Wales are 30 and above and about 1 in 5 is 35 or older when she gives birth. In fact, the Queen herself had a geriatric pregnancy. Queen Elizabeth II, now 92, gave birth to Prince Edward at the age of 37, the same age Meghan will be when she delivers. 
Meghan's sister-in-law, Kate, Duchess of Cambridge, also had a geriatric pregnancy, giving birth to Prince Louis at the age of 36. The first major royal tour for the couple will encompass the four Commonwealth nations over two weeks. Kensington Palace announced the trip will focus on youth leadership, and projects being undertaken by young people to address the social, economic, and environmental challenges of the region. The visit will also concentrate on environmental and conservation efforts, and the whole trip will center around the Invictus Games, to be held in Sydney. Prince Harry was appointed Commonwealth Youth Ambassador in April, and is said to be eager to begin his work in his new role. The couple will take part in a staggering 76 engagements during the tour, and while Meghan will be very involved, she is said to be, understandably, a bit nervous. Meghan, unlike Kate Middleton who waited a year before making a speech, will be speaking publicly more than once. An aide said, she's very confident and will be speaking several times throughout the program. As the newest member of the royal family, however, she's not impervious to nerves, it's her first tour? It's all very new and quite daunting, the aide said. Meghan has brought her best friend Jessica Moroni along for extra support as the Duchess enters an exciting new phase at a very busy time. <laughs>